Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Santinetti. On today's Bible Nugget, we are still in the title of Put Your Face in the Torah. Why? Because when you take your face out of the Torah, <clears throat> excuse me, you put your face somewhere else. Remember what James said when he said that the man that looks into the mirror sees all the blemishes in his face, and we do have a lot of blemishes, because the mirror exposes it. He said, but when that person walks away from the mirror, they forget what manner of person or man they are. This is the reason that he talked about the mirror. It was to reflect a man's face. Even the Bible says in Proverbs that a man's face is reflective upon the water. And like I shared with you that the Torah is not only a straight arrow, the Torah is a straight line, a plumb line that God gives us to show us that when we're deviating off the road, we can get back to the line of the Torah, which means the law. We're at verse 6 of Psalms 119, and we're looking at, I'm going to go to verse 5 first, just to pick it up. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be shamed when I have respect unto all your commandments. The word then is, is a very interesting word because in the Hebrew, it is the first letter and the seventh letter. Before I go on here, I want, I want to encourage you to get online and just say, uh, uh, put on the search bar, the Hebrew alphabet. It'll come up and please keep that before you. You know what? Learn them because by doing so, you're going to really understand what I'm saying here. But now back into the text. The word then, again, then shall I not be shamed when I have respect unto all thy commands. The word then here is the first and the seventh letter, which talks about the strong leader or something that's might, it has power. It actually represents an ox. An ox is a very strong animal. It is a working animal. But then the seventh letter is the Zayin. So the first letter is Aleph, the second letter is Zayin, and it represents a sword something you fight with. So here, when he says, then shall I not. So in other words, there has to be a strong impetus in your spirit, in your soul, to fight against those things that want you to turn your face away from the word of God. So then is saying that I read something before that, but now I'm going to see where I stand and I'm not going to let anything move me from the position where I stand. When you have an attitude, a strong attitude, a mighty attitude, and a sword, meaning that you're ready to do warfare against everything that comes against the obedience that has been established in your life, then shall I not be ashamed. The word shall not is interesting because it means to be without something. In other words, as a matter of fact, why don't we just look at a word here. Um, it says here, Give me a second, please. Thank you. Shall not means to be without something, meaning I am not going to allow this to be in my life. I shall not be disgraced. I shall not turn away from that which has been established in my life. Now, the word here again, let me go back to the, the, uh, the Psalms. The word be a shame is interesting because the word is Watch this now. It is the bet, it is the vav, and it is the shin. This is the second letter, the sixth letter, and the 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The word bet, or vet, actually means a dwelling place, a tent. The second letter is the vav, which means there's a connection, like the word Jesus and the disciples, meaning they're together. But the last word, or the last letter, is a shin. The shin has a few meanings. It could mean prosperity. It could mean destruction. It could mean fire or something that has been already written, such as a script. So here he's saying that I will not be put to shame. That He says, I will remain in the house of that which has been established, connected not to destruction, but connected to the prosperity of God for my soul, for my life. Now, what's interesting 
is that when we look at the word shame, we can go to Exodus for that. And watch this now. You would never look at this word as being shame. It says, And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, get up, make us gods which would go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what happened to him. What's become of him? The word delay is actually the same word as shame. In other words, the people were saying, where is Moses? He has been shamed. He went into the dark cloud. He probably can't find his way out. So he's not coming back. He's shamed. And this is what the, the, uh, the writer of, of the Psalms 119 is showing here. That we will not be shamed when we have the commandments of God before us. We, we will, listen, we will not be destroyed. Now he says, then I shall not be put to shame when I have respect. Now respect is a very simple word. It means to have regard for. To regard God's word, to look at it, and to show regard, to pay attention. Now why is this? Remember, having a strong attitude, letting nothing get in, in the way of the word of God in your life, let nothing delay you from doing the will of God and look directly, look intensely into the law of God. Watch this. Unto. Now, the word unto, this is a very interesting word. This is actually a Hebrew word that has a picture. Well, they all have pictures, but this one particularly shows a man lifting up his hands and looking to something great. It's a movement unto something, but it's restricted. But it also, watch this, the letters are interesting because it is Aleph and Lamet. Aleph, again, is a very strong uh, leadership, powerful strength. But the Lamet represents a staff. It represents a master teacher, a shepherd. So the shepherd has his staff, and what he does is that he moves the sheep with his staff in a certain direction. Because when a sheep begins to go off in the opposite of directing, they're going unto something else that's negative, he takes his staff and he begins to point them in the right direction. So he says, I will not be ashamed when I regard your law. And he says, unto, unto is very interesting, unto all thy commandments. Now the word all here is the Greek, excuse me, the Hebrew word kol. Now, this is an interesting word also because we'll say all, but actually there are two pictures to this. The first one is speaking of an animal whose will has been broken totally so that they do not fight the yoke. Like a horse, you put a yoke upon them. Or an ox. The ox uh, actually plows the land. So when the owner puts the, the yoke on the ox, the ox is not going to resist the owner putting the, the yoke upon him because they trust and they know that the yoke is not permanent. And so they're able to work the field throughout the day. Then the owner takes the yoke off of the animal and gives it time to rest. So here is the word all. The will is broken to do the will of God. But also it talks about a vessel. It talks about a vessel that has been made complete so that you can store treasures in it. It is a whole vessel. You know, remember in chapter 18 of Jeremiah when uh, God tells Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house and he says that he saw the potter working at the wheel and he had a piece of clay on the wheel and when he spun the wheel, the clay broke up in his hand. In other words, it was something wrong with the clay. It was marred, it had things in it. And then the Bible says that he made it unto another vessel that he considered to be good. And I thought about this, and you know something? It kind of broke my heart when I thought about the fact that he had to make it into another vessel. In other words, the intention of the first vessel was not, was not made. It, the purpose of it was not being fulfilled. It got marred. It got dirt. It got all kinds of th things in it. And so by the time it got to the place of the potter's wheel to shape it, it broke up because it had elements in it. But being the potter that he is, an expert potter, 
He made it into another vessel. And I thought about my life. I thought about the way I used to live before I, I uh, lived for the Lord and, and following him you know, to do his will and to serve him. I marred my life. Did you mar your life? But yet God in his mercy, because of what Jesus did, took us and made us another vessel of honor. We, ha- we may be marred, but we're perfect in the hand of the Lord. He has made us complete a vessel that can hold the treasures. Now, the last word is the word commandments, and this is the Hebrew word mitzvah. Now, mitzvah is an interesting word because it's four Hebrew letters, which is the mem, the sari, the vav, and the he. Watch this now. The whole combination of these letters simply means this, a flow of righteousness that's connected to life and grace. That when we... Consider that we are not going to allow anything. We have the sword in our hands ready to fight against anything that comes against us so that we will not be delayed in doing the will of God, that we have regard unto all the mitzvahs of the Lord, then life will begin to flow like never before. It is flowing in the righteousness of God. The connection is the vav, and actually the word, the the meaning of the vav, the sixth letter, is complete redemption. Complete redemption. And I'm going to go over that again. It is like a water because the word, the letter mem here is the first letter to the word mitzvah. And mem speaks about a water that flows. For example, it says that they, that Moses was drawn out of the water. He, they took him out of the water and here is the mem. Sari is righteousness means to stand upright, but that vav talks about complete redemption by the grace and the power of God. So then shall I not be put to shame when I have respect, when I regard unto, when my hands are lifting up, looking at something greater than I, and he's moving me in a way that is against the flow of traffic of the world and all complete, being complete to do the will of God according to his commandments. God bless you. Have a wonderful spirit-filled day. And remember, God has called you to stand up to fight, not to delay, to look directly into the word of God. Don't take your face out of the Torah, the word of God, because God is moving you to be complete according to his commandments. Have a wonderful day. God bless.